In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to work with grid views within Flutter. We're going to be building an application that is going to display us a grid view of pictures, and we'll have the ability to scroll through these pictures and see all of the pictures that are available to us, and we're going to be pulling this information from an internet resource. This video is going to teach you everything you need to know about when it comes to working with grid views within Flutter, and this includes things as how to programmatically build a grid view, how to work with the grid delegate, as well as how to work with the actual direction of scroll for a grid view. As always, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. And if you're enjoying the content thus far, then don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So to get started, I have initialized an empty Flutter project. And within that, I have this material app widget that's being returned for the my app build function. And here I've set the home property to home page. And then home page is basically a de facto stateful widget, which for its build function currently just returns this caption. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is running this actually on the emulator that you're seeing here. And a quick side note that I'd like to mention is that to achieve the functionality of creating our grid view, we're not going to be using any external packages because the grid view widget comes packaged with the Flutter framework, specifically in the material package so now I'll wait for the actual build process to complete and the application to start running on the simulator, and then I will resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, the application is now running on the simulator. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is actually coming to the homepage states build function. And here to my actual scaffold, I'm going to be quickly adding an app bar just so that we have an app bar for our application. And I can see that the app bar title says great view. With this done, now we can actually focus on building the grid view. So the grid view is going to be the complete body for the scaffold. So what I'm going to be doing is setting the body property for the scaffold to be a call to a function called build UI. And then once this is done, I'm going to define this function within the actual homepage state class. And I'm going to say this is going to be function that returns a widget. It's going to be called build UI. And with this done, I will open up the functions body. And the first thing that I'm going to be returning is a safe area widget. This is not necessary when it comes to working with grid views. The only reason I'm adding this is so that the necessary padding is added by Flutter to the actual body so that any notches or other things that might be on the device's screen do not interfere with the actual UI that we're displaying. So for the actual child for the safe area widget, I'm going to set it to be a size box and specifically an expand widget. So what I basically want to do is define a size box and then I want it to take all of the available space that's available to it. And now that this is done, the child for the size box is going to be a grid view like so. And once this is done, I'm basically going to define two things. So the first is going to be the grid delegate. And this basically defines some settings for how the grid works. So the grid delegate that we're going to be using is called a sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. And what this basically means is that this grid delegate basically defines a fixed cross axis count and the cross axis refers to the axis that's opposite of the axis that we scroll on. So the main axis is always the axis that we scroll on. So the cross axis is going to be the opposite for that. So a fixed cross axis count basically means how many elements is our grid view going to have for each of the actual rows you could think of that are on the actual cross axis. And you'll see how this works. It might be a bit confusing, but for now what you can do is go ahead and set the cross axis count to one and just kind of keep following along with me. So there are a bunch of other properties that you can define on this sliver grid delegate. And we're going to be taking a look at those, but for now this should suffice. So now that this is done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is actually defining the children for our grid view. And these are basically the actual widgets that are going to be displayed within the grid view. So the children is going to be a children's list. And then here I'm going to be adding a container like so. Then the container is going to have a decoration property and the decoration property is going to be of type box decoration. And once this is done, then I'm going to set an image property and the image property is going to be of type network image because we're going to be getting an image from a network. And now that this is done, I'm basically going to be copy and pasting the URL in. So let me copy and paste the URL in like so. And that's pretty much all we have to do. And one thing that I've forgot to mention is that the actual box decorations image property doesn't expect a network image. It expects us to pass in an object of type decoration image. The image property of that is going to be a network image. And if you were using an asset here, then it would be an asset image. And with that, that's pretty much all we had to do. So now what I'm going to be doing is basically coming to this URL. And then again, if you need access to this URL, you can take a look down in the description below for a link to the source code, download the source code. 
and I'm just going to remove this variable here and set it to one. So with this, that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. Now, if I do command save and I do const, you can see that now we can actually see the image being displayed within our grid view. Now, if I copy this container and I add it once more, you can see that I'm seeing two images. But for now, the main axis for my grid is the vertical axis because that's the axis that I can scroll on, as you can see. So the cross axis refers to, in this case, the horizontal axis. I want my grid view to have, let's just say, three children on the cross axis. So to do that, what I can do is come back to the sliver grid delegate. And here I can say that, hey, the cross axis count is going to be three. And as soon as I do that, the grid view automatically readjusts itself, understands how it needs to size all of the children within its children's list, and then display them appropriately. So now if I go ahead and add this container once again, you can see that there we go. We have another image being displayed. And once more, and you can see now it's moved to the next row. And there we go. We're seeing the new container being displayed there. So now the next thing that I'm going to be doing is kind of showing you guys how you can automatically build the grid view. And then we'll talk a bit more about the sliver grid delegate and other properties that are on it. So let's remove all of these children's list like so. And let's remove this thing here as well. Let's do command say, make sure that nothing's broken. And to build a actual grid view programmatically, you can use the grid view dot builder function. What this basically does is that it expects us to pass it an item count, which is how many elements are we going to be building for this grid view? So this basically depends upon if you're pulling data from the internet, the list that you have maybe, and what the length of that list is. But in this case, what I'm going to say is that we're going to be building a grid view that's going to contain 50 items within it. And then for each item, we have to define an item builder, which basically defines how each of these items are going to be built. So the item builder takes in two things. The first is the context, and the second is the index for the item that is being built. In my case, what I'm going to be doing is the, yet again, returning a container. And then for that container, I'm going to have a decoration property that is going to be of type box decoration. Then I'm going to have an image property that is going to be of type decoration image. And then that is going to have an image property that is going to be of type network image like so. And then I'm going to add the remaining trailing commas, reformat the code. And now we have to provide it with an image URL. I'm going to be using the same URL as I had used before and the cool thing about using this URL, and I'd like to give a quick shout out to pixem.photos, is that it allows us to get pictures from their website. And by defining the URL in a certain way, we can actually get random pictures for random endpoints. So what I'm going to be doing is leaving a link to them down in the description as well. But within this URL, I'm basically saying that for each of the images that we are going to be rendering, we're going to go to the following endpoint, and then I'm just adding the index here so we get a random image and then what the size of that image is. That's pretty much what's happening here. But now if I do this and do command save, you can see that our now grid view is going to load all of the images and all of the images are now being displayed and I can scroll through this and everything looks great. So we're seeing almost 50 images, all of these loaded from pixem.photos. So a shout out to them, definitely use them. Um, so now that this is done, what I'd like to do is maybe fix a couple of things about this grid view. The first thing that I'd like to do is kind of change how many pictures are being shown on the cross axis. So I see the pictures are very small, so I'll change this to two. Save, and there we go, now it looks good. The next thing that I'd like to do is to actually add some spacing within these actual pictures. For now, there is some spacing, but I'd like to maybe add some more. So in that case, what you can do is use the cross axis spacing to define spacing on the cross axis. In this case, I'll do 10. And as soon as I do this, you can see that now the space between the images on the cross axis has increased. Um, I can do, for example, 100, and that'll signify it or expand it a lot more. But I'll come back and I'll set this to 2. And then to define the spacing on the main axis, you can do the main axis spacing and then 2 again and do command save. And there we go. Now it's adding spacing between the elements on the main axis. So I can do, for example, 100 here. And as you can see, now our grid view adds a lot of space between the main axis elements. So let's revert it to two. And the final thing that I'd like to talk about is how you can adjust the aspect ratio or the sizing for these different children that you see within your grid view. For now, you can see that the grid view is displaying our children in a one to one ratio where the actual height and width of the container is the same. Now, if you want to change the size of how these actual 
children are displayed within our grid view, most people will try to go on to the container and set its height property to 100 and width to 50, and they're going to notice that this does not work. And this is not going to work. For us to actually define the sizing of the children within our grid view and how they're going to be sized, we cannot define the height and width property or any other sizing properties on the children themselves. They're just going to be ignored. What we need to do is come to our grid delegate and actually define something here, which is called the child aspect ratio. And if I set the child aspect ratio to one, you can see that nothing changed. And the aspect ratio of one means that the width and the height are one over one. Now, if I set the child aspect ratio to two, you can see that now what's basically happening is that our width is twice our height, as you can see. And you can't see it properly now because the image isn't taking up the complete space. So what I can do is actually come to the box decoration to the image property and set the fit property here to be box fit dot fill. But as soon as I do this, you can see that now the children is taking twice the width and one times the height. So the actual ratio is two over one, where two times the width and one times the height. What if I want to make it the opposite? I want twice the height and then one times the width. Well, in that case, I can do one half and now it's twice the height of the width. I can do 0 0.5 as well because that actual value corresponds to one over two. And now if I want it to be, for example, one over three, I can do one third. There we go, it increases the height, makes it three times whatever the width is. And now if I want it to be the same, I can relate it to one um, and any other value that you think about. So I'll change this back to one. And there we go, now our grid view is looking great. So with this done, the final thing that I'd like to talk about is how can you change the direction for your grid view? So right now we can scroll on the vertical axis. I want to make the grid view horizontally scrollable. Well, in that case, you can come to the grid view and on that you can define a property called scroll direction and it can either be vertical or horizontal. So in this case, I'm going to be doing horizontal because vertical is the default. So as soon as I do this, you're going to see now that everything switches and now the grid view becomes horizontally scrollable. But now the actual grid view isn't looking as nice as it was looking before. So what I'm going to do is quickly change some things. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to the actual cross axis count and making it four. So now the cross axis is going to be the vertical axis. And the reason for that is because now we can scroll on the horizontal axis. So that has become the main axis. So on the cross axis, now I want four children. There we go. So now it looks much better and I can scroll through the actual grid view like this. And maybe if I want to change the spacing between these elements, that what I can do is come to the cross axis spacing, make it four, add more spacing, and then four here. And there we go, everything looks good. So with that, that's pretty much all you need to know about working with grid views within Flutter. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And with that, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.